I just want to have sex without worry. If you have herpes, then you may be able to relate to this sentiment. To get relief, reduce outbreaks, and lift the shame, I'm going to share the emotional connection to herpes, herbal medicine that you can use to alleviate your symptoms, how to support your body holistically, and some alignment work that you can do to get yourself relief. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time we do a new video about herbalism, healing, and alignment. I've taught clinical spiritual herbalism to over 5,000 students in my various programs and courses, and I get a lot of requests for help with healing herpes in email and in the DMs. While it's a very common condition, there's still a lot of shame, embarrassment, and even confusion about if there's anything you can do to get relief. So in this video, I'm teaching just like I would teach an in-person workshop at our headquarters here in Atlanta. I'm sharing some of the emotions connected to herpes and outbreaks, how to sift through them. We're going to glance at what the chakra system and medical astrology say, and then wrap it up with herbal medicine that you can make and take. So grab a pen, paper, your favorite tea, and let's dive in. Let's go through a very quick overview of what herpes is and how it presents. Herpes simplex is a viral infection caused by the herpes simplex virus. There are two types, HSV1, HSV2 that we're talking about today. HSV1 is associated primarily with, primarily orally with cold sores, pharyngitis, eye and skin infections, as well as in rare and severe occasions, herpetic encephalitis, that's inflammation of the brain. HSV2 causes mainly genital infections. However, either type can infect any site. So after the primary infection, the virus enters the nerve endings in the skin directly below the lesions and ascends to the dorsal root ganglia. This is a collection of sensory nerves located in close proximity to the spinal cord, where it remains in a latent stage until it's reactivated. The primary infection is usually most severe and lasts longer. An active infection can last two to 12 days and cause clusters of small, intensely painful, fluid-filled blisters that ooze and ulcerate. In HSV-1, this is the oral kind. Additional symptoms may include fever, malaise, pharyngitis, and headache. In HSV-2 genital, additional symptoms may include fever, headache, malaise, myalgias, local pain and itching, painful urination, and swollen lymph nodes. Recurrent infections are common and usually less severe, but they can recur maybe as often as monthly. You know, some experience prodromal symptoms. These are early signs before the eruptions happen, like mild tingling or shooting pains. Recurrent infections largely depend on the severity of the first episode and the state of your immune system and your responses to long-term stress. Remember that. HSV is most contagious during an active outbreak when lesions are present. However, it can also spread through saliva and genital secretions when there are no eruptions or symptoms due to viral shedding. Viral shedding is when a virus is released from an infected host after it's replicated, you know, makes new copies of itself on the skin's surface. Typically, when herpes virus lands on a new host, it dives into the small cracks of the skin or the mucosa and it binds to epithelial cell receptors. These are cells that line the surfaces of the body and that triggers those cells to internalize the virus. Even when you don't have an outbreak, you can still spread it. If you don't know your herpes status, go get that tested. But know that it's not a part of like the standard STI test that you get maybe like with your annual blood work. You have to specifically ask your doctor for a herpes test. And even if it comes back negative, get tested again, it could just be that the antibodies haven't developed yet. So get tested yearly. While in many cases, the first infection is the worst, sometimes folks only have one bump, you know, a few bumps, and they don't know it. So get tested. As an herbalist, my practice encompasses plants, of course, but at the crux of it is alignment. Does what we think match up with what we say? Does what we say match up with what we do? Does who we believe ourselves to be line up with how we show up for ourselves in our work, in our relationships, in our world? My mind is always swirling with these questions of how we are living in alignment with ourselves or not and how we feel, life circumstances, that gives us the feedback. I'm always thinking about what's happening under the surface, not just what's going on in the physical body, because the physical body, to me, that's the last point of manifestation of something. Pain is an extension of what's been going on internally. 
The body is a masterful messenger. Thank your body. It's communicating through physical sensation that can escalate to pain. What's going on in your mental and emotional spaces? Pain, illness, disease, you know, these are expressions of that conversation that's happening within. Don't believe that you know, physical illness is just accidental or that it's only your hereditary or your heredity or only your exposure to pathogens or simply eating bad food and not exercising. Those are not the only factors that lead to physical imbalance. It's so much bigger than that. And I think there are more factors at play than like you slept with someone who had herpes and therefore you got it too. This is an objective questioning that I do of like cause and effect. But as someone, you know, who lived with inexplicable pains that seemed to travel from one location to the next, you know, it really wasn't until I addressed my childhood sexual trauma that the pain went away. So I'm thinking about what's going on inside that's manifesting outward. The state of your health is determined by your, your entire ecosystem of your life. And this ecosystem is comprised of your environment, your diet, your history and trauma, your consumption habits. What do you read? What do you listen to? What kinds of conversation do you participate in? Your work, your career and professional fulfillment, your money, your lifestyle, all of your relationship dynamics, your self-talk, your beliefs, and your, your care for yourself. Everything in your life has the ability to enhance or diminish the quality of your health. So the question is, how is the relationship between you and the elements in your ecosystem going, you know, which also includes you? How is your relationship between you and you going? So if this is like your baseline of health, this is your balance point, and it's always fluctuating, right? Like health is never static or still. You know, ask yourself what elements in your ecosystem are enhancing or diminishing your well being? What makes you rise above your bar? What makes you dip below? You, you have an argument with someone, you're gonna dip. <laughs> you eat, but you eat a vibrant, nutrient packed meal, you're gonna rise. You go to a job that you hate day after day, you're gonna dip. You're always stressed about money, you're gonna dip. <laughs> you know, you're gonna dip some more. You watch the news, the lower you go. You talk yourself out of pursuing your dreams, lower. A overanalyze. You know, you don't speak up for yourself, lower. You see the point. You have your own baseline of health where you feel great. And this is where you want to hover. Like this is where you feel the way you know you're supposed to feel, which is not in prolonged pain or suffering. So I teach a mentorship program called Herbal Medicine for the Soul. And one of the reflection exercises is to answer this prompt. I'm healthy when? So in the comments below, write your I'm healthy when statement. Now let's continue. So let's think about this because this video lesson, like this is about addressing herpes holistically, which means that we have to look at it from more than just the symptoms. This is how we do things that I will remedy. This is how we discuss every condition inside of herbal medicine for the soul. Like we don't stay at the surface. We go deep to help you become more aware and therefore you feel more empowered when it comes to your health. So if there are more elements like in your ecosystem that are making you dip than rise, then you don't feel well. And you are more susceptible to viruses, other pathogens, be it cold, flu, anything, and to experience more herpes, um, more herpes outbreaks. When we dip, we're operating below what is our healthy, our, our healthy baseline. Physically, our bodies are under-functioning and dysregulating. Mentally, we're overwhelmed, less able to focus, stressed, and emotionally, you know, we're drained, yet highly emotionally reactive. You know, all parts of ourselves are negatively impacted to some degree, and this radiates outward to how we interact with the world. So as an herbalist, it's my job to tell you, here's the plant work and here's your work. There are herbs that you can take to support your health, of course, help you raising you back up to your bar. And then there are lifestyle and dietary changes, as well as like mental and emotional patterns that you have to shift into. The plant work and your work go hand in hand in order to improve your health and move you closer toward your baseline of vibrancy. So I've talked about the ecosystem and the factors that contribute to your wellness or your illness. But only you know what's going on in your life that's making you feel better or worse. Physical pain is information. You know, where physical pain shows up though in the body can give us really good clues about the parts of us that are feeling neglected and need support and nourishment and the parts of our ecosystem that need our attention. It's information. So take a step back from the emotions. Nearly every holistic healing system from African spiritual medicine, Ayurveda, 
to Native American, um, to traditional Chinese medicine, to medical astrology, they all make connections between the patterns of physical health and the conversation that's happening within. The body is speaking, so let's dive into what it might be saying with this condition. Herpes simplex one primarily manifests orally. This is the fifth chakra, the throat center, the sign of Taurus in the second house, as well as being influenced by its opposite sign, Scorpio. This is the center of our communication, expression, and verbalization. Through this energy center, we express our thoughts, our understanding, perception, reactions, and our creations. It's how well we listen and what we listen to. There are many voices in our heads, right? From our own chatter, doubts, and fears to the onslaught of opinions and judgments from family, society, people we are in community with. Our work is to discern and decide which voice gets the microphone. What should get the mic is our truth. Do we say what we mean or do we betray ourselves or silence ourselves or keep secrets? In this energy center, we should feel heard and validated when we speak. But what is our response when we're not? Do we swallow our emotions and silence ourselves? Do we speak over others as a means of defending against feedback and their response because we don't want to hear what others have to say? You know, we have to value and honor our voice. We feel more stable inside of ourselves when we speak our truth. These are questions to reflect on. You know, what elements within your ecosystem encourage communication, you speaking your truth and listening, and what elements discourage your honest expression? Herpes simplex 2 primarily manifests in the genitalia, ruled by Scorpio, the eighth house, and the sacral chakra. Take note of how this is showing up on that Taurus-Scorpio axis. Scorpio is the sign of birth, death, and regeneration. Wherever it shows up in the natal chart, it's the battleground between the soul and the personality. How are you fighting with the higher part of you? The sacral chakra is the center of our desire, our passion, our feelings and sensations, and the duality of being spiritual beings and physical bodies. How often do we hear, you know, that it's frowned upon to be sexual? Sexuality, when we are conditioned to believe that it's taboo, we feel fear, we feel shame, we feel guilty about our bodies, about our desires for sexual wanting and satisfaction. When we have a wounding to the center, we find ourselves not fully able to enjoy the pleasures all of life has to offer. We are less creative, less enthusiastic, less likely to move toward the things and the people that we feel resonance with. Every desire wants to be satisfied. You know, it's like the ends of magnets coming together. And there are healthy ways to do that without repression or overindulgence. Denial of our sexual nature is a denial of self and feelings of shame, guilt, and fear are also a, re a rejection of self and your wholeness. There is no punishing God, entity, or force saying that you cannot have joy and pleasure in this lifetime. You can be spiritual and sexual. Scorpio also rules intimacy. You know, it's where we're most intimate with ourselves, and that means honest. And also it rules what happens when we get closer to people, right? The more we are triggered, that's what happens. <laughs> Vulnerability agitates our wounds. Scorpio is the energy that invites us to look deeply at ourselves, to be honest about what we see and to heal what hurts. You can be safe inside of intimacy. So again, use this information to reflect on in your own life. How do these patterns show up for you? If there was something that poked, it likely means there's something to look at. If it didn't resonate, then keep it moving. Now let's dive into some plant medicine. So based on the symptom picture of herpes, we need herbs to help in these ways. We need anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and antimicrobial. So like when you have open blisters, you want to protect against other microbes that can enter. Vulnerary, which is wound healing. Anodyne and analgesic, that's pain relieving. Adaptogens to help the body just deal with the effects of, of chronic and repeated stress relaxant nervines to support the nervous system, astringency that will help with tissue tone and dry up the oozing, emollient to soften and soothe, immuno immunomodulators and stimulants, febrifuge and or diaphoretic to help manage a fever if it gets too high. Fevers are a natural and very helpful immune system response, so we don't always just wanna abruptly break it, but we can manage it. Neuroprotective, now we wanna protect the myelin sheets and support their regeneration. This is like that insulating and protective layer around the axons of neurons. Degeneration leads to conditions like MS. Herpes can hinder the repair of these neuroprotecting myelin sheets, so we wanna prevent that. 
This is how we start to build an herbal formula or to develop a protocol. We want to think about what we need first <laughs> before we randomly select herbs. And this, of course, needs to be tailored to your experience of the condition and its stage. And not everyone has the same symptoms. Herbs have so many different indications and overlapping benefits. You do have a lot of options when it comes to this. Um, I thought about providing a list of herbs, but I think it would be less overwhelming and more beneficial to you to provide a couple of formulas, the specific recipes for which we're going to put in the captions so you have easy access. All of the herbs can be found on our website, iwillaremedy.com, and I'm going to link to them so for each one you can read the additional information about the benefits of the herb and the, contraindication, uh, the contraindications on our website. Read that carefully because if you're taking medications for anything or have another condition like a thyroid condition, you want to make sure the herbs aren't going to interfere with that. There's a lot of flexibility here. So if you need to leave one herb out because it's contraindicated, that's okay. For formula one, this is going to be a daily infusion that you'll take daily to support your immunity, mental well-being, your nervous system, and nourishment. Hibiscus, dandelion leaf, lemon balm, and calendula. Formula number two, this is going to be a daily tincture blend with specific antiviral herbs against herpes virus. And when I say antiviral, to get specific, like these herbs do a number of things to combat, to combat the virus, like slow viral replication, reduce inflammation, and inhibit viral growth. These are going to stimulate your immune system response. Typically that means like increased white blood cell production and shorten the duration and severity of an outbreak. This formula can be adjusted. You can also take, you take, you can take it daily and you can increase your dosage of it if you need to, if there's an outbreak. And this includes St. John's wort, echinacea root, Oregon grape root, and fresh ginger root. Again, I'm gonna give you the instructions on how to make a tincture in a caption. Formula three is a soothing salve for outbreaks that's antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and emollient. You're going to use this topically, and it includes calendula, St. John's wort, and lavender. Lastly, I would keep an aloe vera plant at home that you can use during an outbreak. You can break off a leaf and apply the gel directly to the outbreak area and feel near immediate relief. You can also buy aloe vera gel juiced, but you want to make sure it has no extra ingredients that might irritate your skin. Aloe is vulnerary, antiseptic, astringent, cooling, antiviral, and an immunomodulator. In addition to using it externally, you can also use it internally. I would also recommend taking L-lysine supplements. This is an essential amino acid that you have to get in through your diet. It slows viral replication. It works specifically against herpes virus to reduce outbreaks and the severity of them and to improve your healing time. These are just some of the many herbs that you can take to support yourself with herpes. If you search our website for herpes, many more options will come up. I'll put that link in the captions too. Please know that you have options. You don't have to suffer. Keep in mind that plants perform many different functions in the body, not just one. So the ways in which they're supporting against herpes, that's just a small fraction of how they're benefiting your body and helping you rise to your vibrant baseline. Herbs are not one size fits all. You know, you may, you have, you may have to try um, different combinations in, toward, in order to find the formula that works for you. I think pain is an invitation not to fight against or push away, but to lean in and be more mindful and present with parts of ourselves that are calling for our attention. The more mindfully we live, the more we cultivate introspection in order to live in greater alignment with our soul self, the less our subconsciousness, our trauma, and our history determines our behaviors and outcomes. But that's a whole other conversation for another video. In closing, I pray this information was helpful to you and encouraging to you. Reflect on your relationship with the elements of your ecosystem and think about how you can make necessary adjustments that will help you return to your place of balance and vibrancy. I think it's you know such a part of our human nature to wait to take right action when we're in pain, using physical pain as a signal that we need to do something about this or we need to make changes because now the pain is interfering, but we don't have to learn that way. Any internal mental pain, emotional disturbance, mental anguish, the ways in which we beat ourselves up, that's also pain. And we can do something about it then. We can course correct before it reaches the physical. You can course correct before you have an outbreak. And honestly, you can reach a point where you never have an outbreak again. 
If you are on your holistic wellness journey, want to learn how I got out of chronic pain, heal trauma, and ditch dependence on drugs with herbal medicine and the Calypso Healing Method, check out my free masterclass. All of the details and the link for the masterclass are in the caption below. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.